So you want to know more about generating art? I can help you. I can show you a bunch of things that I do to be more effective and efficient with my generations. Here are 17 things to help you out, plus a few hot tips and tricks. Number one, an important thing you need to know is that using double colons to break up your prompts can be more effective than using commas. This is called multi-prompting. So the reason why multi-prompting can be so effective is because it splits the prompt into two or more distinct pieces of information. So my recommendation is to use commas and long sentences when you want to imagine but use multi-prompting when you are looking for something specific. Number two, this is sort of a follow-up, but you can use different weights for each part of your prompt. With multi-prompting, you can give each word or phrase a weight and you'll be able to fine-tune your generation. Now, remember, you can put a space after your prompt and then the double colons or put the colons without a space, but you must put the weight directly after the colons no space. Also, the two numbers you use will be in relation to each other. So 10 and 5 is the same as 2 and 1. Tip number three, you can add dash dash stop and then a number and your generation will stop at that point of progress. Use this if for some reason you want a blurry or unfinished photo. Actually, most people would use this at stop 80 or 90 because the last 10 to 20 percent of a generation can add a lot of details that you weren't expecting. Now, the real master tip is that you can't stop an upscale, but you can click on a photo while it is generating, say at 40% and then save that photo. Now, this saves as a web file, but you can open it in certain programs and then save it as whatever file type you want. Hot tip number one, the best way to get photographic quality is to cite real photographic sources in your prompt. Using the phrase by Vogue could help a lot, as well as specific specific photography language like cinematic still or portrait or even stock photography. Number four, negative prompting is powerful. A lot of full body shots and maybe just a lot of images in general come out with the wrong focal length and there's blur in the photo. One thing that works kinda is using the negative prompt dash dash no blur. While that's specific, you can use negative prompting in a whole bunch of different areas. Like if you were making a picture of a farm and you didn't want flowers, you could say imagine a farm dash dash no flowers or dash dash no barn. You can really fine tune a prompt with this. Number five, changing the size of your height, width, and changing your perspective can produce very different results for a prompt. At the moment of making Making this video, you cannot adjust the size in version 4. However, you will be able to do that very soon, so just keep this tip in mind. Also, this works really well in version 3 if you want to try it out there. So adding in the aspect ratio of 2x3 or 16x9 is pretty common, but you can also try these different phrases for different angles. You can include wide angle shot, which will pull the camera away from the subject, satellite view, which will give a very bird's eye view of your prompt. I level shot will place the camera at eye level. Low angle shot will be from the ground up. Full body shot is your best bet at getting a head to toe figure. Glamour shot is actually a good phrase to use if you're looking for a portrait. Cinematic still shot can give you these pretty epic backgrounds. Aerial view is also a great phrase to use if you're looking for something high above but not quite up in the clouds. Over the shoulder shot is also a good one if you're looking for a certain composition. Now each of those phrases are more influential the closer to the beginning of the prompt that they appear. Number six, how to cancel a job in progress. This is easy. You're going to right click on the image generating, then click on apps, and then right there it'll say cancel job. Number seven, how to delete a generation you don't want. Also easy but very important to clean up your timeline. And there are two ways to do it. First, you can react to your picture with the X emoji. To find the X, you can simply search for it by just using the letter X. Once you've done that, you can also delete pictures by right clicking directly on them and then clicking the X. The X will appear if it is one of your recent emojis. Hot tip number two, add the phrase character design near the front of your prompt. This is sort of like a magic word to get really responsive concept art of characters. Number eight, 
Beta upscale is going to get you the closest to your original thumbnail. Upscaling your image can change it in funny little ways. If you want it to be as similar as possible to the original thumbnail, use the beta upscale. Number nine, remixing has rendered seeds kind of obsolete. If you liked a picture before but wanted to change it, you'd have to find the seed number and then alter your prompt on that seed. Now you don't have to do that. Use the remix feature to alter any picture you like. You can find the remix feature by typing in forward slash settings and then clicking the remix button. This will change the variation buttons to work differently by giving you the chance to rewrite your prompt. I strongly recommend only adding a word or two, like a certain color or style, rather than rewriting the prompt or deleting the prompt altogether and replacing it with a word. Number 10, version 4 is resistant to dramatic changes using the traditional variation feature. And this is good if you want just slightly different iterations on an image. For example, if you don't have the remix feature enabled, hit the variation button under any image and you'll get four more pictures that closely resemble it. Number 11, if you feel uninspired but have a favorite artist, you can also ask Midjourney for something like a painting by Jackson Pollock or a painting by Bob Ross or Andy Warhol and it will give you a generic image in their style very fun to use. Number 12, make yourself some custom ARGs. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not quite sure what it stands for or why they're called that, but this will allow you to type in shortcuts for longer versions of a prompt. You can do this by typing in forward slash and then prefer option set. First, you're going to type in the shortcut word you want to use. Then you're going to click the plus one more to the right of your shortcut, and this will bring up the value choice under option. Click value, and then this is where you type the long version of what you want. I recommend you add shortcuts for aspect ratios, like making dash dash wide equal to dash dash AR 16 by nine. So this way you don't have to type the numbers every time, you just type in dash dash wide, it's great. And an extra pro tip, when you're making the shortcuts for descriptive aesthetics, start the long form with a comma. This will just help you clean up your prompt before it gets messy. Hot tip number three is actually two different hot tips. The first, you can use the phrase Noling Photography, and this will get you some really cool tilt shifted looking images. You gotta try it for yourself. Also, try referencing the artist Lisa Frank. This will get you some amazing looking unicorn colors for your photo. Number 13, rate images on the website. You get free fast hours if you're like in the top 1000 or 2000. I'm not really sure how many you need to rate, but I do know it's not that much in order to get some free fast hours. And that's like 60 images for free. It's not hard to do and it's super worth it. You're literally just telling Midjourney how much you like each picture. Number 14, if you're making pictures in a public channel and you can't find your pictures because because it's scrolling too fast, use the search function in Discord and search for your name. All your pictures should pop up no problem. Number 15, there are other ways to change up a specific image and get more variations. First, you can copy the image address of a picture you've upscaled and then use that in an image prompt and add some text to change it up a bit. Or you can generate normally without any parameters and then using the remix feature, you can add in dash dash chaos, zero to 100, or add in style values, although they currently only work in version 3. That being said, a mini hot tip is demastering or remastering your images using the remix feature. If you generate in version 3, you can remix it to version 4 and vice versa. A fun thing to do is to demaster from version 4 to version 3 and then hit remaster on your upscale. It takes a few extra steps, but it can get you some pretty cool images doing it that way. Number 16, generate on low quality so it's cheaper and faster. You can change this under your settings or you could add a dash dash Q and then a low number like 0.5 at the end of your prompt. The default is one. This works well if you're just looking for colors or compositions that you like. The pictures will generate a little less detailed, but like I said, it'll be faster and cheaper for you, so you can generate more. And number 17, check out this website for inspiration, Art AI Academy. And you can look at the drawing and art mediums or some of the different styles. This website brought together examples of what they all look like, and granted this is in version three, but it's great to have all these words in one place for you to pick and choose and experiment. I hope these help you out on your journey. Like this video so we can share it with others and subscribe for more on the world of AI. I hope you're doing well, take care, and I'll see you next time.